This is how we ride. This is how we do. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and we are here. We are here today. Finally, we're on a completely uh, different laptop. We've had a bunch of crazy things happen. We got a new shirt, new shirt that just came out. Just bend it. This is kind of what it looks like now uh, with the Sprint car with the updated wing cap sticker on there. Really, really badass shirt. Check them out, longlivethechaz.com. I like them a lot. Just bend it. Uh, have a little bit of a background. We'll decide to put some plugs and some hats off in the background since everybody's been complaining about how wide it is in here. Well, welcome to the damn motorsports world, ladies and gentlemen. It is definitely very wide in here. I was just trying to show a little bit of symbolism in my new videos. But since you don't want to face the damn truth, since you don't want to understand how widey this sport is, we, we had to put a little energy into the situation. So, welcome and enjoy the new uh, white background with the electrical plug inlets and outlets and, and uh, hats laying in the ground. And yes, the Polycolor Giovanni hat is right down there. But anyways, I thought Sprint Car Racing needed was lap traffic for them there to be a race for the lead. Now listen, I got into an argument last night. I got into a war while we were watching this race. Because let me show you something. This is, of course, on YouTube, the highlights. This is lap 18 of 35. There was some pretty good racing in the, in the main event. Now, let's also give a, a, a tip of the hat to Lincoln Speedway for finally giving us heat race surfaces that were not just heavy down, locked down, one lane racing. I'm sorry, Sprint Car Racing. We need these tracks slick to put on some damn good side-by-side uh, -side racing. That's just my opinion. I know that's really hard to do. I think they were able to do it here with Lincoln just because it was just the World Outlaw Sprint Car Series. If you add another class, track gets tore up, wore out too much, and you're rubbering the surface down. That is an issue. I can understand why people, oh, we need to keep it heavy early in the night, so by the time the A-Main comes, it's a little slick, but, you know, mid-race, it slicks all the way off or gets pretty slick with a good groove up top, good groove on the bottom, but the Lincoln Speedway was last night. Was it not I mean, the heat races were just unbelievable, and the main event played out as such as well. As we're watching a little three-wide race here, this is lap 18 of 35. So six laps to go. Anthony Macri's closing in. We're going to have a race. Yes, we're going to have a late race. Lap traffic's there and everything else. Marks doesn't know it's up there on the very top. There ain't no stick signaling in, in sprint cars. And no, TJ Stutz comes in here with his very uh, well-qualifying ass. I'll tell you that. He's really good at qualifying, which is why he always uh, is in the A-mains of these outlaw races, which is everything qualifying, by the way. He brings out the yellow, and at this point of the race, I said, it's over. And and when I say that, clean air is, is so much of an advantage in sprint car racing. If you're on a big track, three-eighths or more, apparently there's no such thing as a four-tenths, because four tenths is two fists. There is no such thing, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. By, uh, just for the record, there is no such thing as a, a four tenths mile. All four tenths miles are two fists. Just so you know that. But when we get on these bigger tracks, clean air is so important. And yes, on some bigger tracks, when you go green and the leader doesn't have the lap traffic to take that clean air away, it's it's pretty much we're waiting for the leader to catch the end of the pack so that second place has an opportunity to even catch him. Because of, he has so much of an advantage with the clean air out front. And now some people would say, well, he just has to go to another, to another line. Well, in this World Outlaw Sprint Car Series thing, everybody knows where the badass fast lines are. And usually they're always taking it. But once again, Lincoln Speedway had the perfect racetrack to where these guys could move around. And because of that, I was proven to be an idiot by one man named Anthony Man Macquarie. The concrete cock. And we all know... I'm talking about roosters. This is a situation where there was enough on the bottom and enough on the top for Anthony Macri to say, okay, Marks is going here, I'm going there, and I have that clean air. Now, these guys are screwed. There's no way they're, they're going to make up any ground on these, on these two because they're both in the dirty air. These are the only two guys that have a shot since lap traffic is out, and I thought it was over. But Anthony Macri did some Anthony Macri shit. Because when Marks went to the bottom, Anthony Macri, hey, you want to put him on a cushion? I know he's used to running the boards at Port Royal, but when you can do it on a half mile, you can do it on any damn track there is. You just got to get uh, some cadence. And he had cadence built up the whole damn race, and he cadenced his ass straight to the damn checkered flag right there and won the damn race. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Of course, the people watching the race with me, 
They were like, oh, you're just a dumbass. I hear you talk all the time about dirty air. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, this was a rarity. And anybody who knows the damn sport, this is a damn rarity. This was Lincoln Speedway at the, in the best Lincoln Speedway track conditions I've ever damn seen. And this is Anthony Macquarie, who's got out onto the damn road. And now, hey, hey y'all better watch out. And when I say y'all, I'm talking about everybody in the damn sprint car world. You thought you were worried about Buddy Kofor in the 11 car doing damage. You better be worried about this 39M car. You better be worried about it because he's about to be pouring some concrete on all y'all's asses. Anthony Macquarie is going to be a force to reckon with nationally now. I think that's coming. I know y'all were just worried about Brent Marks out of PA nationally, but now you got uh, two uh, Class A drivers in some Class A cars that can do some Class A shit. And that's why they were running 1-2. Of course, good run for Danny Dietrich, also out of PA. He was sitting there uh, in fourth, came up through the field a little bit. Chad Trout fell a little bit. Um, sitting there in seventh, I was really pulling for Chad Trout. But this was special, man. So, yeah, I was wrong last night. I was the dumbass, and, and, and sprint car racing did prove that you can race for the lead without lap traffic taking that clean air away from that leader. But I'll tell you what. The special thing that we saw here was how badass Anthony Macri is slowly becoming. And this is dang dangerous. He did this at Lincoln to Brent Marks. You know, if, if that was on the odds maker sheet, that wouldn't really be, you know, a favorite to do. Five to go. No lap traffic. Brent Marks starts first. Anthony Macquarie second at Lincoln. Most people would put their money on Brent Marks to stay out front in the clean air, win the race. That just makes sense to me. That's not what happened. I think there's two factors of that. One, we're not on a big three-eighths, four-tenths, or two-fifths, or half-mile racetrack. And two, it's a Lincoln Speedway. It was perfect track conditions. Good groove on the bottom. Gro good groove up top. And, and honestly, three. The driver of that 39M uh, did some some special shit last night. Y'all may not understand how special that actually is. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, that's how I saw it. I was proven wrong by the concrete cock known as Anthony Macri. Car. <laughs> I'm just saying. Anyways, what do y'all think? How rare was that to happen? How impressive is that what Anthony Macri just did? And, and is he now solidified, especially after the high limit win at 34? Is he a guy now? that you have to worry about when he rolls into the gate. Is he now in that Brent Marks level at all racetracks, not just at Port Royal like some people like to label him? But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, what do you think? Leave a comment below. Like the video, share the video. Uh, we're going to be trying to get out onto the road just a little bit. We are still going to continue building this studio we got here and, and, and try to make some really great things. If you want to join the support, links are in the description. Or just go get you one of these Just Bend It shirts. They are really badass in my opinion. Uh, longlivethechaz.com in the Chaz section of the shop to get yours today. But anyways, ladies and gentlemen, as always, be sure to subscribe, and we will catch you next time. This is how we ride. This is how we do. Riding mud, sliding up higher in the groove. Don't give a damn about the cash we're spending. With the time we got, we choose. The plan on the go to stay out on the run. We are